You've probably heard about wasps that hunt spiders, such as the amazing tarantula hawks of America. We've got spider hunting wasps here in Australia too. I'll make a video about them sometime. But did you know that some flies are just as deadly to spiders? Here is one of those flies. As you can see, it's a pretty innocuous looking insect. It's a member of the fly family Acroceridae. They are known by various common names, including spider flies, small headed flies, and humpback flies. But for this video, let's just stick with spider flies. There are about 520 species found throughout the world, and in Australia we've got about 50 or so species. All known species of spider flies are internal parasites of spiders. In other words, their larvae feed inside spiders. It's how they do it that makes it interesting. The flies don't have stings like spider hunting wasps do. So the flies can't sting and stun a spider and then lay an egg near it or on it or in it. Spider flies need another way. The fly we are looking at is in the genus Oxodes. It's a cosmopolitan genus. In other words, it's found in many regions of the world and in various habitats. Oxodes female flies usually lay their eggs in huge numbers on dead twigs. By huge numbers, we mean about 5,000 eggs each. The eggs are tiny, about a third of a millimetre long. Multiple Oxodes females lay their eggs at the same time, so the twig quickly becomes covered in eggs. From a distance, it looks like the twig is covered in soot or something. The urge to lay those eggs is quite strong. And sometimes the females miss their target. Check this description. At times, they appear to be so preoccupied that I have seen them laying eggs on the legs of other adults, which have inadvertently gotten in the way. That quote is from a 1960 paper by Evert Schlinger, who was a world-renowned expert on spider fly taxonomy and biology. Much of the life history information we are about to talk about here is largely made possible by Schlinger's work. I've got one more anecdote about egg laying, as told to me by Sean Winterton, a current entomologist who wrote a paper on Australasian spider flies. In his words, they frequently show up on clotheslines, especially Hill's hoists, because it is strong wire without a plastic covering. For viewers outside Australia, this is a Hill's hoist. After the eggs are laid, things get interesting. The eggs hatch into first instar larvae known as planidia. They are about a third of a millimetre long. A planidium is a specialised form of a parasitic insect larva that is mobile and protected by a hardened skin. As you can see, they're covered in hook-like hairs. The sole purpose of this life stage is to find a host, a spider, and get inside it. An alarmed spider brought to you by Cheesy FX. Initially, the larvae, the planidia, stand erect beside their eggs, ready to attach themselves to any spider that might wander by. Larvae can remain like this for a few days, or kind of inch along like a, a leech might, you know, that sort of head to tail movement. Larvae can also drop to the ground or jump about a bit by springing into the air. Eventually, some of the larvae make contact with spiders. And when a larva makes contact with a spider, a game of cat and mouse begins. Once the larva attaches itself to a spider's leg, it freezes motionless until the spider starts to move. As the spider moves, the larva moves slowly up the leg. It's trying not to alarm the spider. I mean, the, the hairs on spider's legs are very sensitive. If the spider stops, the larva stops. And in this sort of stop-start way, the larva moves all the way up the leg and on top of the abdomen of the spider. Conveniently, this position is out of reach of the spider's legs. So the spider can't flick the larva off. 
The larva then cuts a tiny hole in the abdomen. It moves inside and settles in the book lung area of the spider. A book lung is a spider's respiratory organ. It's a series of sort of thin plates um, which sort of press together, kind of look like the pages of a book, hence book lung, and a spider has a pair of these. The larva passes through a few larval stages inside the spider, but it is the final stage which does most of the damage to the spider. It consumes the contents of the spider's body before emerging and pupating. Interestingly, just prior to its death, the spider spins a web, which the emerging fly larva uses to attach to so it can pupate. An adult fly emerges from the pupa after a couple of weeks. Oxodes adult flies don't live very long, a few days at most, because they have reduced non-functional mouth parts. You won't see them feeding on flowers, for example. Their only job is to mate and for the females to lay all those eggs. Spider flies in other genera, such as panops, have long mouth parts and are commonly seen feeding on the nectar from flowers. But let's stick with Oxodes. Here is a male and a female. The male is about five millimetres long and the female is about eight millimetres long. It's not surprising that the female is bigger, given that she has to lay all those eggs. All that remains of the spider, usually, is an empty exoskeleton. Not all spiders are parasitised by spider flies. Web spinning spiders, such as orb weavers, escape the attention of spider flies. It makes sense. How would a fly larva get to a spider sitting in the middle of a web suspended um, up in a tree or a shrub or something? Oxodes flies are known to parasitise spiders that are quite common in gardens, such as wolf spiders, jumping spiders and flower spiders, otherwise known as crab spiders. I'm interested to know if you've heard of or, or seen uh, spider flies before. If you want to learn about some other interesting insects, check out this video here on scorpion flies and hanging flies. No, it's not another video about flies. They are not actually flies. Check it out. And thanks for watching.